Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 74 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net dot, 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 and I'll try to answer it the best I can. Let's just get right to it, shall we? First one is called Dr. Nick Street Flat Earth Measurements. Your advice, please. Hi, Mark. My name is Nick Street. I live in England on the South Coast. I'm in a town called Worthing. I wish to carry out a series of objective experiments to determine at what distance will a beam of light be unobservable. I do not support either the global or the flat earth model, but wish to conduct a series of experiments to test the above statement. I have a PhD in chemical engineering, so as you can imagine, I am approaching the experiment with a scientific method and want to ensure that variables are controlled whenever possible. The C is making that difficult, I bet. My friend and I have started to do some preliminary tests with high lumen torches. I have a pair of of 10 watt green lasers <clears throat> coming from abroad, I bet China, but don't know whether they will make it through customs. Eh, I think they will actually. Living on the coast, we live between two well-known UK piers, Brighton Pier and Worthing Pier, which are approximately 9.5 miles or 15.3 kilometers away from each other. I have an old Mead ETX-125 telescope and my friend has a pair of binoculars. We also have a new wind farm that has just been built on our coast. It's called the Rampion wind farm, R-A-M-P-I-O-N. So far, our very simple prelim tests have demonstrated that we can clearly see each other's torches from 15.3 kilometers away. Any and all advice based on your experience on how to proceed would be much appreciated. Best, Nick. Uh, yeah, if, unfortunately his email is so old at this point. The If you're going to be doing some tests on your own, just start looking up those te type of tests, long distance photography tests or laser tests or whatever it is, or just type in flat earth test into YouTube and just start watching a whole bunch of content. You will pick up some great stuff. I, th I believe the, the record so far is 40 kilometers with a laser uh, done by FE Core in uh, Hungary over in Europe. So there you go. This one's called Van Allen Belts. Hi, Mark. Thanks for your FE content. I have questions regarding the Van Allen Belts. There's been a lot of discussion concerning the health effects of human exposure to the Van Allen Belts. However, I haven't found anything relating to it being possible to transmit and video, audio and video signals through those belts. Have you heard anything regarding this? How would one go about disproving communications uh, to and from the moon and or Mars? Would be another nail in the coffin. Thanks, Arthur and stay flat. Yeah, Arthur, you're absolutely right. Uh, for, forget about the health benefits. How are video and audio communications getting through this high staticky ionized belt that's thousands and thousands of miles wide? How 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 are communications getting through at all? Clear communications, mind you. The, the Apollo missions <clears throat> with limited battery technology and just a simple dish supposedly punched through them with clarity. There wasn't even snow as far as I could tell. Anyway, uh, this one's called High Mark. That's literally the title. First, survival grid, please. Okay. Secondly, your opinion on this. I have an experiment I would like to attempt, but my life at the moment doesn't permit me to pick up and go. Here's my idea. Item needed. Three identical gyros. A spirit level. Both flat earth map and globe map. GPS, compass, and airplane ticket to a designated place. So that's, that's a pretty big list. Let's let's just get that out of the way right now. The experiment consists of mapping the trajectory towards the location in question on both maps, FE map and globe map, and also GPS coordinates. Once information acquired, hop in the plane with three gyros. Why three gyros, you may ask? The first one will be set horizontally at level with spirit level. The other two will be set spinning vertically towards the respective direction of both maps, utilizing the GPS and compass to ensure precision on these set directions. Comparing the plane's direction on the screen and the compass. This would determine if the plane flies around the spherical radius of the supposed globe and confirm which map is accurate. My projected results should be that the horizontal gyro will stay level at takeoff and, and arrival, and that the gyro set with a FE map will be directly aligned with predicted direction, and the other will be bogus. What do you think? Or have have this has this test been done? No, not to that extent. Thank you for all that you do. You're awesome. Jano Savoy, S A V O I E. And that's in Bathurst, New Brunswick, I believe. That's what N B stands for, I believe. Yes. Uh no, that has, that test has not been done. Will be an interesting one if you can pull it off. This one's called Seeking F Ears. Hey, Mark, I have yet to meet any F ears. Oh, they're out there, man. And not in a position to host a meetup, but I hope you might put my email out there to your show as someone seeking F ears in Kansas, especially Topeka, 
and Emporia, Kansas. It would be so nice to have someone to talk with right. Thanks. And that's P Picasso Paint Paints Paint Service at gmail.com. So P I C A S S O Picasso Paint Service at Gmail. That his name is Jeff. He's in Kansas. Would love to talk to other Kansas flat earthers. And I'm sure there's plenty out there. This one's called Tommy Boyd reaffirms flat earth belief in 2017. Hashtag flat earth. There's a link to that. You guys can check that out if you get a chance. I think the video is called Tommy Boyd for reaffirms flat earth belief. This one's called flat earth question regarding Antarctica. Mr. Sergeant, when a coworker started talking to me about this flat earth belief, I honestly began to wonder if he was insane. But after working with him for a few days, he made some arguments to me that I'd never thought about or had no idea how to argue against. So I began researching and after a couple months now, I consider myself to be on the fence, leaning towards the flat earth side. But honestly, just feeling mind blown right now and searching for answers that would get me off this fence that I never would have imagined to be on a few months ago. But there are a couple things that still do not seem to make sense to me, and that's with a lot of people, uh, that I was hoping you might be able to get your opinion on. I'm sure you've already answered this at some point, one of your interviews or videos, but I not have been able to find it. Uh, one is the 24 hours daylight in Antarctica in the summer months. Yep. How can that work using the flat earth model and any location of Antarctica that would curve the, the flat earth? Two meteors that will eventually fall to earth. How can that be possible on the flat earth model covered by the firmament dome? Would greatly appreciate your answers, opinions to those questions, or if you could possibly lead me in the right direction to research these topics. Thank you, Michael Wooten. Wooten? Wooten. God, my, my eyes are so bad in the morning. Uh, yeah, uh, meteors, you guys already know that one, if you've listened to any of these shows, and the Antarctic sun, also sort of, one we don't know, because we can't get down there, that's the tricky part about Antarctica, yeah, there there could be 24-hour sun, but the, the two camps are that there is no 24-hour sun, because the government controls pretty much everything down in Antarctica, including the video footage, or that there is 24 hour sun, but it's coming from multiple light sources and they're trying to hide that as well because multiple light sources shouldn't exist. So either way, either way, I think you're covered there. Moving on. This one's called Niagara Falls. Hi, you two. It's two, Mystir and me. Was catching up on videos, was watching Hot Potatoes 217. Let me know if you guys want to see Niagara Falls. I could bounce this off uh, Mark while a while back didn't hear back i know you guys get so busy but maybe we could spend a day of the two of the falls wrap up a night with another meet, meet up with in niagara with big guests uh, i would love to attend the documentary festival but i was having a hard time finding how to, how to get tickets not trying to crash your party by any means would love to meet you two before denver since i know you'll be swamped with press uh, mark was not ready to present this just yet but i'm working on some leads on trying to find a way for you two to debate somebody in rochester if I can get it set up, I'll personally fly you out in a hotel just to see one of what it make this happen. Uh, let me know if you have any info to share on the festival. Yeah, obviously this letter was written before the Toronto Film Festival where the film Behind the Curve, the Flat Earth documentary, you guys can check it out at BehindTheCurveFilm.com, debuted. And it was fun. We did a meetup there in Toronto. It was, a, it was a lot of fun. We could not go down to Niagara, unfortunately. It was just too far away. It was a couple hours away from Toronto, and, and we just did not have the time. Uh, we were too busy doing the whole documentary thing. We did a private screening, then a public screening, then did the meetup, then hung out with a few people, but uh, could not get down to Niagara. But yeah, as far as the debate goes, yeah, I, obviously, I will debate anyone. It's part of my flatter challenge. It's in the description box of every single video I have out there. Academics, if they want to debate me, fly me in. I will do the rest. This one's called Flat Earth Initial Contact. Hi, my name is Roy Wood Pratt, and I'm with an in international production company working on a series for television streaming services, which aims at a very high goal. The premise is to cover a specific topic in each episode, which gives equal time in a neutral fashion to both the flat earth theories and the globe theories about the topic. Most of these will be explained in layman's terms with additional materials available online. The first 10 episodes have now secured funding and I'm tasked to find the top 10 topics on which to embark on. You know, I didn't even see this email <laughs> until now. I'm reading it as is, uh, assisting because of the title, Flat Earth Initial Contact, uh, the writers to create final episodes. He sent this back to me in the first week of April. 
Uh, if you can spare of your little time, I'd like to know what you think are the most 10 more, most important topics around these two realms of theories. Uh, oh, I know why. I actually did glance through this. If you have concrete outputs of research for one or another, any pointer at all would be highly appreciated. I'm sure you're aware of yourself. Uh, there's a lot on the globe side, but hard to find well-organized information on the side of flat earth. Okay. See, yeah, let me finish off this email and I'll tell you what this is. On a general topic, I'd like to be very great, thankful for pointers as to what basis the majority of flat earth proponents base their observations, such as basic math, geometry, maps, which portions or notions are generally not accepted. Should you have contacts to others who could aid me in finding additional information, please let me know or feel free to forward my contact in the kind woods, Roy Wood Pratt. Okay. This is a fake production company couple couple tips how 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 you know this right off the bat he starts out with like oh yeah i'm working on a television show right and then you know first 10 episodes already been funding never ever would they ever say that um if they had 10 episodes they would have contacted a whole bunch of people simultaneously simultaneously third the big one that the the they they're, they're leaning. They couldn't help themselves. And that was the pretty much, oh, the globe's already been proven, but there's not much on the flat earth side. So I want to know what your top 10 points. He's basically baiting me to try to just, just give up my top 10, top 10 answers, which is fine, but he's lying, you know, to do it. And it, when he signs it, here, here's the, here's the kicker. No contact information at all. Every producer that has ever contacted us has put in, you know, their email, their phone number, their Skype address, what their little company is, their website, all this other stuff. It's a, it's a little bait, nor was there any follow-up by him. They're always very persistent. And so, yeah, I get this every once in a while. It's just a globalist trying to troll, but he's, he's hoping that I will respond because I don't respond to a lot of emails. He's hoping that I'll respond by pretending that he's a producer. Great. Fantastic. Yeah, but I've seen this before. It's nothing new. So if anyone's out there and they get that sort of letter, I mean, you can email it or you can email them back if you want, but uh, just so you know, it's not going to go anywhere. This one's called Survival Guide. First, kindly email Survival Guide. Second, keep up the great work in debunking globe theory. Third, I don't want to talk to you no more, you empty-headed animal food trough wiper. I fart in your general direction. Oh, oh, oh. I, I get what he's saying. Uh, your mother was a hamster and your father smelled of elderberries. Just quoting the French soldier. Yeah, you didn't have to tell me in Monty Python's Holy Grail. Nothing personal, just hoping to make you laugh. Yeah, it's funny. Last, keep it flat, best Frank. Yeah, it's a great movie quote from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Uh, one of the one of their best movies. Although I think for me, Life of Brian was had had more meaning. Uh, and the meaning of life, I thought, was also excellent. Their, their last one. So... Thank you for that. It's funny. But yeah, but you didn't have to tell me. I knew that. Come on. I'm a media guy. Okay. This one's called F.E. Mark, I'm not trying to play devil's advocate. In fact, I'm 99% sold on F.E. I really love the fact that it brings scientific truth to scripture. By the way, a couple of things for your consideration and in your favor. According to Genesis, Earth was made in day one, the sun and moon in day four. Hmm. What did the Earth revolve around in the interim? It didn't. Uh, but a couple of nagging questions. What about the northern lights and long and short days of nights of the North Pole? One more, just as a plane would have to cons constantly dip its nose to the sphere and circumnavigating the Earth, wouldn't a vessel have to constantly steer to the right or left? Yes, it would. But remember, a vessel is so slow, so which is why we don't track it. It's like watching freaking paint dry. I mean, it takes sometimes a month or two to cross a freaking ocean. The... Um, uh, that they don't notice. They they don't notice the course corrections. Plus, the GPS tells them where to go. So the GPS isn't going to tell them they're turning right or left. It's just going to tell them, oh yeah, you're, the, it'll the boat actually will go on autopilot. In some cases, uh, this one's called. Or, I'm sorry. Uh, by the way, there's an error I think in one of the screenshots you use. You subtract the degree of the supposed tilt of the Earth, 23.4 and 100, and get 66.6. Yeah, I know. Again, I think that's what you're doing. If so, the math is wrong. 100 minus 23.4 is 76.6. Uh, you're right. You're right. Why is everybody putting 66.6? No, because it's 90. Ah, <laughs> yeah, that's where your problem was. It's not 100, it's 90. Thanks for your time, Joe Baker. I was going, wait, why would everyone screw that up? No, it's, it's 90 minus 23.4. It's not 100. That's all right. Hopefully he'll listen. Hopefully he figured this out after he sent the email. 
Hey, this one's called Atmosphere Vacuum Separation. Hey, Mark was reading New Time magazine. They had an article about why people didn't get hit by space junk often. Apparently, wisps of atmosphere make it into the vacuum. Lol. <laughs> it's all falling apart as being illogical. Yeah, the article. Why don't more people get hit by sp falling space debris? The principal cause is drag from faint whips of atmosphere that reach into the vacuum of space. Oh, oh, that's oh, so irritating. Anyway, this one's called Survival Guide, Bitch. <laughs> Literally, that's the title, all caps with four exclamation points. And that is in reference to Neil deGrasse Tyson. Hit. The last scene, again, weird, the last scene in Zoolander 2 was literally Neil deGrasse Tyson. It wasn't the stars of the movie, it was Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, but during that movie, he was talking to them, and they, and he goes, I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, bitch. Anyway, so the guy says, send me that survival guide, bitch. Just kidding. I heard an episode where you said no one ever says anything like that to you, so I thought I would be the first. Yep. Keep up the good work and stay. Flay it. F L A Y E T. Nice. Nice little twang on that. No need to correct me, grammar Nazi. Yes, I said flay it. <laughs> Curious to see how you pronounce that on air. And oh, by the way, when I said just kidding at the beginning, that was about the bitch part. I still want the survival guide, please. Thanks, Justin. <laughs> hey, you're welcome, Justin. It's awesome. This one's called The Earth is a Ball After All. Hi, Mark. Just had to send you this, and it's a picture of. What's it a picture of? Ah, yes, him standing next to uh, yeah. It's, I think I I think I included this in the slideshow already. Uh, a guy, there's a sideways tree that's uh, that he's leaning against, and, and it makes him look like the yeah. yeah it's, it's pretty cool. It's a great tree. All right, this one's called "Please Help." That's always good. Hello, Mark. Please. I'm sorry. Hello, Mark. Firstly, I've been awake for nine years. However, I've only stumbled upon the FE Truth about a year ago. I'm 100% on board with it. I have watched all your beginner's guide videos and many, many more from all over YouTube. I do, though, have a question that I just can't seem to find the answer anywhere. Please excuse me if you, if to you this is a silly question. I have watched tons and tons of documentaries on YouTube which say Antarctica is the ice wall which goes all the way around the Earth. Then why is it said that Antarctica is the South, the South Pole? It's not a dumb question. It's because we're told it's the South Pole. Simple as that. Uh, she goes, I hope you understand my question and I'm desperate to understand because I'm clearly missing something. No, no, you're not. The, remember, if it's a globe, there has to be a South Pole. So they just say that Antarctica is the South Pole. It's pretty clever. But magnetically, there is no South Pole. I, I had an Australian intelligence officer say that, look, he goes, eventually, you know, you think when you get to the Southern Hemisphere, the compass starts dominating South, you know, like in the North, you know, dominates North. Eventually, you know, the strong, the strong force is going to pull it South and it never does. He goes, it's always North. He goes, North, North always seems to dominate, which should not be the case. Please, would you be so kind to answer this for me to point me in the direction of video where it's answered? Many thanks in advance. Lisa in the UK. Moving on, this one's called Request Harmony Paper. Hello and good afternoon, Mr. Sergeant. Would like to start by saying I really love your stuff, man. Ever since I started watching and listening to your videos and broadcasts, I feel like a big and heavy weight have lift off my shoulders. I see and live life completely different as I used to, and for that, I give thanks to you and the whole Flat Earth Society. Last but not least, could you possibly send me the Survivor PDF that you always offer to those who ask, and the PDF of the God of Throne by Mr. Dale. Thank you very much and have a great afternoon from Switzerland. And that's from Waldo. And yep, anyone wants any of that stuff, whether it be the survival guide or the harmony paper or the coast to coast interviews, just email me and I put that in the title somewhere. It's going to be a really, really short email and I will shoot it to you. Hey, look at this. This one's called Please Defend Survival Guide. That's it. There's Len. This mail has no content. Well, you're welcome, Lee Allen. I've sent him the survival guide. Great. This one's called question marks. Literally, it's just three question marks and an apostrophe S. Mark, just now saw your video, Flat Earth Q&A's email, 68, dated April 8th. And your email address. Can you direct me to biblical sources to for answers to the questions below? And yes, how does, yeah, I... Anyone wants the biblical stuff, I usually send them to Rob Skiba's great website, which is called testingtheglobe.com. 
if you're a strong Christian or even not a Christian, you know, if you're, you're into, uh, you know, the real spiritual side of things. Uh, but again, it's quoting a lot of chapter and verse, go to testingtheglobe.com. Great, great stuff on there. I'm going to be running into Rob a week from yesterday because we're going to be doing the meetup in Los Angeles down in Arcadia. He's going to be down there and Patricia Steer and I think Jaron and Miss are coming down and Nathan Thompson. It's going to be a party. This one's called Room 237 Reference. Hey there, Mark. I've been watching your videos and I just started to watch Room 237 you referenced in one of your early videos. Please remind me what I'm looking for in this video. It seems like it had something to do with Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> However, I don't remember... Uh, now what the reference was or what video it was to go back in and look again. Thanks for your time, Jeremy Faust. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, the documentary called Room 237 is about the making of the movie The Shining from 1980 based on the Stephen King book of the same name. And it is basically Stanley Kubrick, who was always accused of helping the government fake the Apollo program with his techniques and film. The, the whole reason why 2001 A Space Odyssey was even made was because the government financed it for five years. Literally started in 1963 and no, no movie takes five years. Not back then, it, they don't. Not if you're going to make money. And released it in 68 before the Apollo program really, really ramped up in 1969. And uh, he, the, the, the story goes is that he built in, in 1980 12 years later he built into the movie basically his confession that said that he that he was the one that, that helped the government and room 237 refers to uh, a room in the in the hotel called to, number 237 although also known as an anagram for moon room you'll look that up and nothing in that room is real it started out as this beautiful dream because it would have been, you know, any director that, that gets an unlimited check, you know, here's the government blank check. You can do whatever you want. But by the time he got to the end of his project, he realized it turned into a nightmare. And that's what he took. That's what he built into the Shining movie. So he went off of Stephen's. He, he went off the rails. You know, Stephen King had his book, but Stanley Cooper decided to do his own thing. And that's what he did. And it was very clever. And nobody caught it for years until after he died. That was that was the genius part about it. you know Kubrick died in 1999 after he made Eyes Wide Eye, Eyes Wide Shut his last movie with Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman and that's check that out if you get a chance I was, Eyes Wide Shut is a great movie but look into watch The Shining again and then watch the documentary Room Two Three Seven brilliant again it's it's his confession it's it's really really great and Stanley Kubrick was the the best director of his era and one of the best of all of all time. All right, moving. Uh, this one's called Survival Guide. Good evening, Mark. Can you please send me the Survival Guide? Thanks and have a pleasant flat day. You bet. This one's called Your Films in, of 1999 Theory. I just talked about it. Uh, hey, Mark, enjoyed the show. I wrote a whole theory about how 1999 represented some sort of peak. Uh, here it is in full. And yeah, collected thoughts on 1999. I'm going to have to go look at that. 1999 represents the para... Oh, boy. Para paradic Digmatic present? Wow. Paradigmatic? Whatever. Everything after it is all just an illusionary future. We were all still approaching the true millennium in some sort of... Wow, you're using vocabulary that I haven't even seen. Uh, some sort of paradox. We are getting near the proverbial... Uh, seriously, man. I, there's... I, the words you're using here never get used, ever. Length of perceptual and experimental phenomena like bu butter spread to... And then you spell thick wrong thing across a piece of toast. The illusion is showing cracks, especially when every other thing is about to reboot or a remake. Incidentally, Malcolm McDowell was in a film called Class of 1999, where the kids discover that their teachers have become robots. I remember that one. It wasn't very good. Lone Gunman, Pilot, and Donnie Darko are like some sort of fabric of time thing going on. It's like some clue on repairing the timeline or something. It's everything from the time wave, end times... Uh, Malaysian 370-911 fake news, undertones of school shootings, mysterious planes that go missing. It's all there. Everything is baked into Donnie Darko, our whole ontological dilemma and collective coma. And that's from Wolf. Thank you, Wolf. And I will have to check that out. But you're absolutely right. Uh, 1999, look it up. If you don't know what I'm talking about. It was the finest years. In, remember, that's 20 years ago now. It was the finest year in cinema, period. 
there it was like the peak it was like all the producers didn't know if, if 2000 was going to happen and all the projects all their best stuff was put out in 1999 look at look up the list if you get a chance it's amazing the amount of movies iconic movies that came out in 1999 and then it's it stayed high for a few years and then after about 2003 2004 it just plummeted and then you know then the best television came out and you know a few years after that and we haven't done anything in media even remotely original in uh, years years and years which is why it's one of the reasons uh, this whole civilization has jumped the shark and it's time to go to act three whatever that entails moving on this one's called m theory paper request greetings mark please forward the paper mentioned during the atc oh yeah the air traffic controller meets uh flight instructor on fe tuesday episode i'm a real person an experimental physicist by education with only an engineering physics associates and a physics bachelor's degree but i know we don't count me as qualified but i love to read the paper regardless love the shows and entertainment you've been providing the people as a former teacher and university physics lab instructor you can imagine the unlearning i had to endure just considering the implications i swear we proved that the globe is still at least it is still at least three different ways but somehow a new magical spell or new equation suddenly made it all work out except i would keep asking questions even as a teacher later i love great questions hmm has my mind become so open that my brains have fallen out looks flat feels still it's all been lies holy crap flat man <laughs> warmest regards blake and his email is literally called bingo boom shakalaka <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a sports center thing. All right, this one's called YMCA. All right. Mark, you just talked about treadmill day and you talked about spending time at the YMCA. Just curious, when you go to the YMCA, do you have a bunch of people coming up to you saying, no way, it's Mark Sargent. I don't actually go to the YMCA. Uh, there he is, uh, had to ask. Things are really moving forward and I don't, and I know you don't like flattery, but I have to say it. You have been a huge inspiration in waking people up to our reality. Just the other day, I was out for a walk in my local wildlife preserve on a nice trail through the woods. I had not been on this trail for a little while. As I walked, I saw in very large letters, research, and I said to myself, could this be what I think it is? No, it can't be. My heart pounded in my chest as I got closer. Research flat earth. This is a very popular trail and gets hundreds of hikers, biker, bikers, and joggers every day when it is nice outside and it is right in front of people. I just hope no one gets in trouble for graffiti painting the trees. <laughs> Haha, otherwise Bill Keith and I might be prime suspects. We are the only two flat earthers in Erie that I know of. Oh well, I guess it's time to start an Erie, Pennsylvania meetup and see who shows up. Peace, joy, love, keep it flat. JJ from Erie. Yeah, don't, don't, don't deface the trees with research flat earth. Seriously, don't. <laughs> that's probably, yeah, it's, that's bad. Don't do that. This one's called Flat Earth Clues. Hi, very well put together video on YouTube. I know enjoying getting into the flat earth idea. Kind regards, Ross. All right. This one's called Contact Info. Mark, I was hoping you could give me the email of the contact person who had the Grants Pass meetup. I could make at least one but would like to get together with the group. Thank you, Mark. I've been listening to you for about one and a half years. That's from Stephen Marlowe. And uh, yeah, I think I pointed him towards the, the right person. Uh, I got a whole bunch of survival guides here real quick. So survival guide, Mark, could you please send me a copy of your survival guide? Cheers, mate. That's from Pixo. Uh, this one's called survival guide, please. Mark, love your videos. That's from Devlin, Devlin Watson. Yep, sent him one. This one's called Flat Earth Clues. Hi, Mark. I'm fairly new to the Flat Earth community. I was wondering if you had a copy of your Flat Earth Clues transcripts. I love the series and would like to read it this time so I can understand the point better. I am thinking about starting a YouTube channel and talking about my experiences as an, I am an engineer. Would love some reading material. Thanks, Johnny. And I think I sent him the transcripts. Yep, pretty sure. If I didn't, if I, if, if I read you something and you hear your thing and I haven't said something, please email me back. I know it takes a long time because I get tons and tons of emails, but I will eventually get back to everyone, hopefully. Uh, this one's called Hiding God. Mark, I just watched your YouTube video on Flat Earth, so you're looking for someone who might, M-I-T-E, be keeping secrets. That's from Jason Phillips. Uh, yes, I, Jason, get a hold of me. Anybody that smells might the other way, I would love to get a hold of. This one's called Survival Guide. Thank you. That's from Lane. Welcome, Lane. This one's called Flatter Challenge. 
Hi Mark, I believe that the Earth is flat. I came to this conclusion after watching your YouTube video, They Hiding God. It just made sense. I fought about a challenge. I'm reading that right. Uh, or way we can prove it. There are these people trying to disprove the curvature of the Earth with the laser beams across lakes. Why don't use this technique to prove it's flat with the North Pole at the center? If someone put a laser pointing east or west in a compass needle and follow the beam along, let's say west with another compass pointing to north south east west on the laser beam if you are on a globe you should be able to follow the laser beam and keeping your west orientation but you uh, if you are on a plane with the north pole on the middle after a while you find your compass that travels along the laser beam start showing your direction in southwest instead west or southeast if you're traveling east as we know that we can't bend the light that should prove our point please put this challenge out and please call it the Savato test. <laughs> if you find this interesting or you think it should work, please get back to me. You're Rom oh, you're Romanian friend. The Romanian friend from the UK. P.S. If you find any problems with my grammar or English, please go easy on it as it's my third language. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that email confused me, but I love that he's thinking about it. Love that. Love that, and I'm sad I didn't get to read the whole thing in, in my terrible Russian accent. This one's called Flat Earth, Smiley Face. Hey, Mark, my name is Ilian. I've started been... Oh, you know what? No, I am going to read this. It's, it's really, really short. Hey, Mark, my name is Ilian. I've started been interested about the Flat Earth theory, and I'm doing research about it, and I was going to ask you for some help and some info if you have time. Thanks, kind regards, Ilian Stefanov. Uh, I'll, I will email him back. Yay, I got to do my accent. This one's called Anytime. Smiley face. That's from Natalie. Don't know what that mean, means, Natalie, but I like it. This one's called Need Help. <laughs> Hi, Mark. How are you? Learned about your world recently after my father died. He left me 200 years of history containing clues from my Masonic ancestors. Mm. My grandfather dropped my dad off at church every Sunday as a kid, never attending himself. Father became a minister. Grandfather died broke. Family wealth disappeared. Family name was changed. Those men broke a chain and saved my soul. Everything saved item... Everything saved item points to flat earth. Compasses, watches with the crystal broken, magnifying glasses, coins, stamps, comics, pictures. The story is unbelievable. Maybe I should not talk about it. How do I get more involved? And he doesn't leave a name. The Well, you get more involved by spreading the word right now. If, you, if you're so inspired, make videos. If not so inspired, uh, just size up your audience. And don't, don't, don't tell just anybody. Tell the people that you think you can connect with. But... Better be sure. Better kind of feel them out a little bit. This one's called Survival Guide. Hi, Mark. Dave Schmidt here. I'm wondering how to get FE clues on DVD for to distribute to my old school family. I know from my past experience with them that unless you don't give them something tangible, they won't bother taking a gander at anything. Most don't even have internet. <laughs> Not much I can do there. Honestly, the anyone that doesn't have internet at this point and they're on DVD, the, the numbers are so small compared to other people. I also know the DVDs in my Baker Dozen family that I grew up in just counting kids. My mom gets a DVD and my grandkids sees it. Could, without even being watched, put that spark in their head. I, yeah, there's no, I don't have any DVDs of the clues. Somebody wants to make me some DVDs of the clues. I will pass them out to, or I'll shoot them off to people. Absolutely. But I don't get that many requests. Maybe once every couple months. I don't get much time to go out to the internet. So I figured I would shoot you an email. I'm a car hauler extraordinaire. Lived my life rolling down those big flat long roads of ours. He heard a uh, saying a while ago that pass on to all. Life changes when our habits change. Hmm. That's from David. Thanks, David. This one's called Video. Mark, just watched Mott of your video posts about hiding God. Want to know if we can speak more about current events. Do you know about Q? That's from Greg. Uh, yes, I do know about Q. And I haven't heard from them lately. Of course, you're writing from a couple months ago. You're writing from the past. We're time traveling. This one's called, Are You Still Around? Hi, Mark. Do you believe in E equals MC squared? Mm, I used to. Uh, I do believe in the bonds between atoms. But that's a whole nother thing. Why is C squared and what is the relevance of M considering relativity? Well, it's condensed. It's a condensed version of the formula. 
Um, the most con contradiction to reality in the sense of relativity, nothing in this equation can be relative, not even E. Yeah, it can. I don't want to get into it. Einstein watched a fire consuming wood deriving to this. Well, that's because he was trying to explain it to a reporter. He was actually very good at dumbing things down. I'm a technologist and something is wrong. Would love your thoughts, RGS. And I, I don't want to get into the whole relativity thing right now. Uh, because eventually you're going to have to get to what is matter. What, you know, what are we made out of? What are we made up of? Are they, is it electrons? Is it, a, is it a simulation? Is it actually strong and weak bonds of an atom? It doesn't take too long, and we only have an hour for this show. Okay, this one's called Flatters and Other Hot Potatoes 222 with Patricia Steer and Mark Sargent. Mark, I've been watching your shows for the past several years. I am here to say that the information that you have put up has been nothing short of outstanding. Being a Protestant Christian myself, it is help me put faith in a stronger position the this that seal if for my on the flat earth is the hydrology one has to understand this then it is easy to get it keep up the excellent work what has helped me was the subject matter experts that you have interviewed having a civil engineering background that i have it was easy for me to understand the flat earth one has to really understand from a design and engineering not science white coat academic priesthood or philosophy human reasoning that's from idiola cool awesome this one's called video i saw your video from 2015 very good work do you have any recent work yes i do uh, with new information i can watch i love that people have only watched the clues and they have no idea even i have a main channel it's because it's been spread out in so many different places it's like oh yeah that mark Sargent, he made that one thing it's like no, no, no there's there's lots of stuff out there i have a few questions and observations but don't know if this is a good place to present them to you uh have other by now also if phone number is same thank you uh yes all the stuff is same nothing has changed email is the same phone's the same I, I try to update what i do is i update all the descriptions you're wondering why all the descriptions look exactly the same it's because i have so many videos i do not have time to pick and choose so i just blanket coverage and i when i make changes i i change all thousand plus videos at the same time and so everything is about as current as it can be for convenience sake this one's called Phones in Space. Mr. Sergeant, my family and I went to the movies and one of the commercials beforehand had an astronaut using a cell phone in, in space. Would this work? <laughs> no, it wouldn't. But even if it, even it, even it seems to contradict itself in some places. I try to listen to your show when I can, but don't recall uh, you covering this topic. I know how you feel about satellite and if we are all using them for our phones, why they wouldn't, they work in space. This link says... It's all about the cell towers. It's from Quora.com. Could mobile phones work in space? No. Oh, my God. No. No. If there was space, no. The, the range is too far. Um, even if you believed in mainstream science, there's, there's contradictions there. Like the Van Allen belts. Like the atmosphere. Like the power. Hell, you go, you take a cell phone into the middle of the freaking desert. Even now, 2018. Even now, you'll, you'll get dead spots. So just for the moon, whatever. Uh, would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you. That's from Scott. Please withhold last name. Although I've got to mention that your last name happens to be my grandmother on my father's side, her maiden name, which is interesting. This one's called Coast to Coast Content Request. Mark, keep doing what you do. You're reaching plenty of logical, intelligent people. I'd like your Coast to Coast content. I love that program, and I've been listening to you for quite a while now. Thanks, and God bless Jared. Yep, I sent him the Coast to Coast thing, and because Coast to Coast, for whatever reason, I did an interview with them, and they will not let me reproduce it. Won't do it. They're behind a pay site, and I had to sign a thing. Normally, I'd probably you know, ask for forgiveness and just put it up. But they made me sign a, a thing saying that I absolutely wouldn't do it so they could actually take legal action if they had to. So I never did. And they even smacked me for a trailer. I, and it didn't even have anything to do with the interview. It just told people. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, if you want to listen to my stuff, you got to go to their website. And their interns are, are told to shoot first and, and ask questions later, which I'm not completely against. I was just sad that I was a part of it. This one's called Video. 
Hi, Mark. I'm new to all this movement, and I think I understand the frustration of all involved in order to prove their statements. But what puzzles me more is the difficulty that the establishment experts at all levels have in order to demonstrate to us that their undeniable facts with clarity from the moon landings to the South Pole and even gravity all can be debatable for some reason, and that is why everything becomes more questionable. But why can't a lot of truth seekers force the issue demanding the truth? Why is it so hard? It just is. Truth is always hard to get out of people. Anyway, uh, regarding regarding the South Pole, has anyone look at Lance Armstrong? You, you want a good thing about the truth? <laughs> Why is it so hard to get the truth? Lance Armstrong <laughs> was doping for seven years, and they accused him every year and try and asked him, just badgered the hell out of him. It's like, why do you keep winning the the tour, the Tour de France? Why do you keep winning? You know, every year when you shouldn't be, you should be dying of cancer. And you know, why does this thing keep happening? And he lied, 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 until they absolutely had him dead to rights. And it's like, oh yeah, by the way, I was doping the entire time. So yeah, it is tough to get the truth out. Anyway, regarding the South Pole, has anyone ever tried to take a private plane, well-fueled incognito from, say, Argentino, Argentina, heading south over the ice and see where it would take them to and see what the compass says? If the plane gets shot down or disappears, then how about charter several planes altogether in a convoy, heading in the same direction, watching each other's back? I bet they won't try to make all of them disappear. Why? Because <laughs> uh, yeah, what pilots are you going to hire for this? What planes are you going to put at risk? Why is no one trying to do the obvious instead of talking about it? Because it, that we're talking about a lot of money. Only a billionaire would be able to, to try this thing, even make the attempt. Because, okay, you've got to rent a plane. It, it, let's say you just have enough money to rent a plane. Forget about owning the plane outright. You've got to convince a pilot to bypass GPS and just charge the, the military line and why? What, what are they getting out of it? What? It, come on. It's an, it's an easy question to answer. Uh, regarding the lunar missions, uh, what I question besides so many other things that are too good to be true is simply the battery power to accomplish everything. Yes. If a Tesla can only give you 250 miles with a modern battery that occupies the entire car, so how do the morons on the moon able to have seven-day missions with endless chores all requiring power and lots of it? What kind of power did they use? Because I don't recall any generators replenish those batteries. Seems that you guys are not bringing on board the right people to help you debunk all the lies and stories. And please, this is I, I understand you're frustrated. I get it. Uh, explain to me why it's so hard to recruit a few good smart men to solve these riddles. Why not concentrate on the first domino, an easy one for starters, the simple one of all, instead of looking to prove the most complicated theories after the first one falls and the rest will start falling immediately on the chain reaction. Remember the simplest answers of the obvious ones and are usually in front of us. Just need to focus properly. Thanks for your time. Got many more questions and ideas if you have time. Thank you. That's from Albert. Yeah, I understand your frustration. And we're working on, we're getting there. This one's called <clears throat> Toronto, April 30th, 6 p.m. King Street. Hi, Mark Tim. Found your work for three years. Could you uh, fire me the details about your Toronto event? Yep, yep, yep. That already happened. And what is next? Uh, stagnating topic. Dear Mark, thank you for all your work on the Flat Earth topic. I'm a believer from the word go. Anything which comes under Bible-supported information brings joy to my heart. Unfortunately, I think that Satan has already invaded the plane of the subject, pun intended. The fact that God Almighty needs to continue to be the focus of this extremely pertinent uncovering of truth for 50 years, the government has been stealing from us not only money, but the understanding of a massive part of the creation, the creation he made for us. We need to regain the offensive and bring this factual scientific discovery to the attention of Christians everywhere. We need to amass numbers of people <clears throat> who are ready to throw off this criminal and perverted government, as well as the droves of false prophets who twist the truth and cherry pick the parts of it that suit their purpose. It is the time of the pouring out of the blessing of the truth from Yeshua that we must steward this information to, uh, to the benefit of all who have been denied the truths of God. I wish Skiba would make a more concrete stance on this because his knowledge is second to none. I will, it will go unused though. If we do not stand up together and stop the lies, I will stop here because I don't want to write so much and you won't read it. Oh yes, I did. I did actually read it, uh, but don't let this fade into the distant fog. Mark, we must unite in ways we never before have and call upon him to support and guide us. And that's from Stephen. This one's called Toronto, April 30th. Dear Mark, two years ago, I was looking for a NASA website to open every morning to watch the Earth from the International Space Station. What I found was that NASA uses CGI... And they have lied to us. Then, being a Bible-believing Christian, I had a Holy Spirit awakening. 
It took a couple days, but I came to the conclusion that God never said we live on a spinning ball. However, an enclosed circle where the sun and the moon move. Going to school in the late 60s, early 70s, I am fully aware of the ever-changing deceptions of NASA and the space programs and ha now have questioned teachers on these things. I was made to feel unintelligent. That all being said, my husband thought I had lost it after I told him. However, it only took him two to three days because his countenance 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 changed and he said it was all a lie he knows it because he was always a believer that the moon landing was a fraud yeah it's a good place to start uh, all that to say this we would love to come the, to the to toronto con conference depending on cost we live an hour away and after telling a few friends who came to the conclusion it's flat so they may want to come as well would you send us the information thanks for your much for your brave bravery not easily to step out uh Praying for you, God bless John in April. Hopefully I did, because that was a while ago now. This one's called My Favorite Meal. Oh, sorry. That's a personal one. This one's called Valuable Flat Earth Video. Hey, watch this version of Flat Earth versus Science versus Religion and share it if you like. Added more to this version and it's amazing. And it's called, what's it called? See if I can fire it up. And this video has been removed. <laughs> nice. Nice. Awesome. That was from Exit Babylon. This one's called F-E-N-J. Mark, I would like to encourage you to encourage all meetups to post every other meetup video announcement. First, it would capture any friends in that area. And second, it would show Flat Earthers yet that we are growing. First, they may be curious, and second, they won't want to be left behind. You could even make it un an unpunishable requirement. <laughs> Something to consider, Maryland. Yeah. yeah. And that's from Flat Earth, New Jersey. Uh, three of these in a row. Let's knock these out. Survival Guide. I am requesting a koi mark. Really? Couldn't actually spell copy. That was from Craig Baroudi. I'll call you out on that. Uh, this one's called Survival Guide. And, ooh, got me, sent me pictures. Please send me a survival guide. God bless you, America, and all people on flat earth. He's from Croatia. And that's from Stenko Perik. And this one's called Survival Guide. Wow, I got a lot of survival guides. Hello, Mark. I am fairly new at exploring this subject. And after adjusting my 68-year mindset to accept such a dramatic shift to a new thought, could you please send me a copy of your survival guide? Thank you, Sharon. You're very welcome. And she's a financial fitness advocate. It's nice. All right. This one's called... Try not to end on a survival guide. We still got a little time left. This one's called Flat Earth. Hello, Mark. I just saw your video you made on YouTube about the flat earth. They hide God of the biggest lie ever. It was a great video and I learned a lot. I think it was very logical and straightforward. I always wondered why we were taught that the earth was a ball. It never, never made sense to me how I never noticed any curvature over the horizon. They few times that I have flown, I've always noticed a flat horizon as far as the eye could see, and that is hundreds and hundreds of miles. Nor did it make sense to me that the stars never changed their juxtaposition as the Earth traveled through space around the sun, as we were told. I have to admit that I am a little addicted to information about the flat Earth and the nature of where we live. We really have a lot that we don't know about the Earth. It's great to see documentaries like the one you made. I think it put together very well. I enjoyed it very much. Just wanted to commend you for the well-presented video. I would love to learn more about this subject. Do you have any thoughts on what is beyond Antarctica or the other continents exist beyond Antarctica? Yeah, I think there's a barrier between us and other continents. And I think there's other places with civilizations. Absolutely. But I don't think we're going to be getting out of them until they want us to get up. I don't consider myself of any specific group such as a flat earther, but I no longer believe the earth is a ball. I thought the idea was crazy at first, but I know uh, I firmly believe otherwise. If you have any other information you could recommend about Antarctica or more information about the flat earth, I would love to see it. Thanks, Tony H. And by now, I am sure he is neck deep in flat earth goodness. This one's called Survival Guide. <clears throat> Mark, would you please me send the survival guide? Thank you kindly, Bill. Yep, got that. This one's called No Subject. 
Mark, can I get... <laughs> nice. He doesn't need... Okay. Uh, Mark, can I get a copy of your survival guide? Please, sir, I know that being a Green Beret that I should be ready, but I have a feeling that you have a lot of good info that the Army will not give to its own. Thanks for everything you do, man. Salute, Chad and Stacy. Yeah, I, I actually like my survival guide. I think it's I think it's really it especially for the United States it's a really good armchair quarterback sort of thing and that is you don't even have to prep anything if you don't want just have the guide with you boy you have better have a printed copy because then you have no excuse it's like otherwise you're like reading on battery power and you have to charge it off your car This one's called Flat Earth Video Flat Earth Video Hello, Mark. I watched one of your videos on YouTube and I was intrigued. How is it that you came to the conclusion that the Earth is flat? I'm very interested in knowing how you did and if it is actually flat. That said, travel times and layovers all make sense. That's from MG. Yep. And I don't have to answer that one because, again, it was so long ago they are already in it. Love it. The great thing about Flat Earth is that you can. there's so much content now. You can just type Flat Earth into anywhere and you'll just get a wall, a whole other world opened up to you. Yes, a little bit of play on words there. This one's called Two Questions. Hi, Mark. Hope things are well. I was watching your video. A lot of info. I wouldn't pass, put it past any government system to lie about pretty much anything had to say. I was list, listing to the book of Enoch, Noah's grandfather. He was indicating different planes, planets in space. Well, different. Uh, just observing the sun rising and setting in the planes. If the earth is flat, wouldn't the sun start out as a small dot and get larger and then get smaller as, as it goes past? Potentially, yes. But since it generates so much light, probably not. And with the filters, look, it's... It's what we would do in a projection system. Again, what we... What we put on the ceiling part of a giant television it's easy enough to do it's called instancing we do it in simulations now we've been doing it for 15 years trust me when i say this we have the ability to simulate it on a limited scale and if we can do it they can do it definitely in fact they can do it a lot better than we can this one's called flat earth Mark, I've been watching some of your videos on YouTube. They really make one think. The question that keeps coming to mind is, if the Earth is flat and they, whoever they may be, are bent on keeping it from public knowledge, what is it they gain from doing so? Yep, about one out of every 10 questions I get. Somebody will throw that in there. Uh, I've been trying to wrap my head about around this theory. Why Why would they do it? It does make more sense, but then I try to throw in the religion that I once believed until I started questioning that as well. I would like to believe that there is a God, but I began to question the UFO conspiracies. I have, in fact, witnessed these for myself in the present and once many years ago. Then there is the spiritual realm of loved ones and those that have past and I can't dismiss because I have no doubt that it is real. I have seen it. I have experienced on several occasions communications with loved ones and seen entities with my own eyes. How does it all go together? Well, that's the big mystery, isn't it? Uh, what is real and what is not? Also the big mystery. It's enough to make anyone go mad. Well, not quite mad. I have to find reason for anything and everything. I am a little stumped and, and to say the least overwhelmed. I must sound like a kook, she spelled it cook. Uh, you got to spell that with a K, not, not with a C. I assure you that I am not, but I thought to myself, I'm going to shoot you an email. Why the hell not? And see what your thoughts may be. By the way, you do a great job in your videos. Most of these videos I pass on to the next. I find yours easy to follow along with your voice. Makes it easy to listen. Thanks for your time, Michelle. Uh, you know what? I'm going to let her know that I read this in this version. All right, which one are we going to end on? Oh, this one's called Your Book. I'm not going to end on a plug. Mark, I just read your book, Flat Earth Clues, and I liked how easy it was to read and follow. The chapters were interesting as well as the scenarios. I didn't see the water argument, though. That's because when I wrote the book, the water argument wasn't even there yet. I don't know if I missed it, but something like water is always at level. Yeah. Uh, also, I see Flat Earth merchandise that says gravity holds no water. I don't understand that. Gravity holds no water? Oh, right, right. Yeah. That's from George George Cook. Spelled with a K-U-C. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, I've just watched your Flat Earth presentation on YouTube. It's very interesting. Wonder why it has been hidden from us if this theory is true. Do you have a book or anything? Uh, yes, I do. And I will send her a link to said book. This one's called Flat Earth. Awesome. Give me more. <laughs> That's from Demetrius. 
D Demetrius Manley. That's a great name. And, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully he's found, uh, you know what, I'm going to send him a link to the channel too. I have to keep dragging this stuff to my to-do pile. Okay, this one's called Flat Earth College Courses. Mark, you have to get these people on the phone. Uh, and it's from McDanielFreePress.com. McDaniel to offer Flat Earth Courses. Hmm. Put it on blast. That's from Luke. It's awesome, Luke. All right, which one are we getting? Uh, we got to find a good one here. This one's called Clues History. Mark, I've been following your videos for months. Great intro. I wonder if there's an archive you made that holds the ideas from past callers, emails, or testimonies. There are so many to remember and will certainly be helpful if they can be found on a page that's searchable. Regards, Henry. Oh, man, I am going to have to send my page. There's so many people that just don't know I even have a YouTube channel. They just see the clues out somewhere. All right, this one's called Hollow Earth Explanation. Hello, Mark. I watched your video, They Hide God with the Biggest Lie Ever, Flat Earth Clues. You mentioned about Hollow Earth, but did you not explain about the story of Hollow Earth? No, I didn't because it's not Flat Earth. Is Hollow Earth true or just a story to make people confused to the Flat Earth theory? No, I, I think that you can use both at the same time. Hollow Earth doesn't mean it has to be a hollow globe, but it just means a big cavern that you can put a civilization in. Remember, most of our civilization, by that I mean about 95% of it, lives between sea level and one mile up. Because altitude sickness starts kicking in at about 7,000 feet. And one mile up is about 5,500 feet. It's a really, real narrow band. You put, you make a cavern that's 10 miles high, you could have commercial airlines liners fly in it. You make it 20 miles high, you could put spy planes in it. In fact, who's to say that we aren't in a giant cavern right now? It's part of the big thing. Okay, let's see if we can end on one more. Uh... Uh, Throne of God. Hi, Mark. Could you please send me a copy of the Throne of God you mentioned in the Q&A video? I'm fairly new to the Flat Earth concept, but find it fascinating. I'm not 100% on board. Find myself closer to every day. Keep up the good work. That's from Jason. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth New Zealand. You know what's end on this one? Flat Earth New Zealand. Um, hope's flat and, flat and stationary, and he's thanking me for the whole Flat Earth New Zealand thing, which he... he um, which we set up actually this is this is the setup for the flat earth new zealand which you guys can look up if you get a chance they uh, flat earth new zealand did their first conference and dave murphy and i both came in via skype and talked to him on a big screen at a bar and it was a lot of fun and if anyone wants me to do that same sort of thing wherever whatever country you are look if i can do it in new zealand i can do it anywhere a lot of fun great people drank a lot of questions it turned into a big q a I said a few words, and then I just opened up to the floor. They they had a microphone out there. Uh, not that they passed around. I think it was just set on a table somewhere. And they just threw questions at me, and it turned out great. And and the media was there. And, yeah, I think they had less than 50 people. But it was a, a great little thing for New Zealand. And, again, shows you what can be done in the, the most unlikely of places. So with that, let's wrap this one up uh, before the cat comes in and starts bugging me. The, it, guys, thank you for everyone that's written so far and everyone that I haven't gotten to that's already uh, the email sitting in the box. I won't be able to get to it to next week. Next week, I won't have a uh, email show because I'm going to be down in Arcadia, California in Los Angeles at the meetup. As a matter of fact, Sunday, I will be at the Salt Sea doing uh, watching a test that some debunkers are going to try to debunk the Flat Earth by doing a long-distance photography test first thing in the morning. That'll be oh so fun. Uh, so you guys want to join us? Remember, Arcadia, California, Arcadia Park. It's going to be this Friday afternoon. You can look it up. Just type in Flat Earth Meetup Arcadia. And I'm going to be there. And Jaron and Patricia Steer and Rob Skiba. And there's going to be all sorts of great people there. So that's it. Till next time, guys. Stay flat.